think I owe her an apology because I think the battery on that microphone died. Um, we were able to pick her up off the pulpit, but probably not as well as we could have. But I apologize. I think the battery has, has died in that one. Yep. <laughs> Battery's dead. We'll take care of that one. But we were able to hear and we're just talking about the same God. Because you realize even with what we've been talking about with I once was but Jesus, it's the same God. And interestingly enough, <clears throat> if you think about it, the God that created the universe, the God that spoke and things came into existence is the same God that we can have a personal relationship with right now. Amen. And that, sometimes I think about that and my mind just kind of goes, the older I get, the more things I realize can blow my mind because it's like I hadn't even thought about that one. It's like, pow. So we're going to be back in. We're talking about I once was, but Jesus. And as you're getting ready for that, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to follow up one thing that I forgot to say about the women's simulcast. If you are on Realm, you can sign up through Realm. But if you would like to, you can go to our brand new website, victoryfortworth.net. And it's on the homepage. And you can click there and it'll take you to Realm to where you can register as well. Also, if you want to catch, all we can do right now is just the messages, but the previous messages, we're able to throw that on the website now too. God blessed us with a free way to do our website. We're not having to pay 20 bucks a month to have it, have it done. We're hosting it ourselves through Realm, which we didn't realize was there. It's like, hey, look at that. God's taking care of us in one other way. But we're going to be talking this week about I once was... What do you think this week's going to be? Kevin, you can't say it because you know. <laughs> I once was deaf and mute, but Jesus. Now, I remember the stories. Have you been in church long enough that you remember the stories to where Jesus opened the ears of the deaf? Before we get there, Vicki, don't worry, this is not in the passage, but I want you to do this. I was just reading the other day, and this really just, it just, it, it hit me. I want you to do this, turn to Mark chapter 6. This is not the passage we're in, but as we get into it, I want to show you some things. Because we've talked about the man that was blind, the man that was possessed, the man that was a leper. And what all God has done. I want you to do this real quick. Like I said, this is not part of the message, but it's part of the message. Matthew, or Mark, chapter 6, starting with verse 53, says this. When they crossed over, they came to the shore of the Gesenaret and anchored there. As they got out of the boat, people immediately recognized him. They hurried throughout the region and began to carry the sick on mats to wherever he was. Whenever he went into the villages or towns of the country... They laid their sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch just the end of his robe. And everyone who touched it was healed. Folks, this is the same God. Amen. This is the same God all the way through. The same God that healed the blind, the man that was blind, healed the man that was a leper, healed the man that was possessed, healed the woman that was sick. This is the same Jesus. Now, do this if you're in your Bible, flip over one page because this is where we're going to be is in Mark chapter 7, <clears throat> starting with verse 31. I'll give you a second to get there. Verse 31 starts out like this. And again, leaving the region of Tyre, he went by the way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had difficulty speaking and begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. So, they, so he took him away from the crowds in private. After putting his fingers in the man's ears and spitting, he touched his tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said, Epaphtha, that was be open. Immediately his ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak clearly. He ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more they proclaimed it. They were extremely astonished and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. 
Pray with me. Father, as we come to your word today, I pray that you would just make it alive. You would make it speak. God, that we would listen to what it is you have to say. Father, we love you. We worship you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you look at this story, this story is interesting as you go through. It says, leaving the region of Tyre, he went by the way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. Now, you realize, if you, if you know Bible history... He's not in the, Jerusalem, in, in the Jew territory. He's not in the Jewish region. He's in the Decapolis. He's in the area where it's the Gentiles. Okay? Now think about this. Jesus, as they called him, King of the Jews. He's going to the Gentiles. Well, he went to the Samaritans too. But he's in the area of the Gentiles. And he's spending time in the area of the Gentiles. That'd almost be like, well, I was going to say like us going to Oklahoma, but I'm not going to go there. But um, pick an area that you don't like, and it's like, I'm going to go spend time there on purpose. And he's there. And, of course, we have to realize his reputation precedes him. Now, we've talked about this each week. How do the people know who he was. How did the people know what he could do? Not a rhetorical question. Feel free to throw in some ideas. How do they know? Others. I'm going to put it in a simple word that if you're old school church, you're going to get this. Testimony. Testimony. You know what a testimony is, right? You walk into a court of law, you know what your testimony is? What happened to who? It happened to who? You. You realize that in a court of law, nobody can negate unless they have proof that something didn't happen. If you give your testimony and you actually get up and you take a note, this is my truth. Uh, I swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. I've only seen that on TV. Okay? Well, I have to take that back. I did see it once because I served on a jury. If you can ever get out of jury duty, get out of jury duty. I mean, do your civil duty, but goodness, man, some of the court, some of the cases you can get on, I'm not even going to go in to tell you about the one I was on. It, yeah, we ain't going there. But get this, he's in the area of the region of the Decapolis, which is the ten cities. They, somebody, G, oh, these are Gentiles, somebody, some people, it said they, brought him a deaf man who had difficulty speaking and begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. Again, how did they know? How did the they that's in there, how did they know to bring their friend to Jesus? They heard from somebody. Did they see it on Facebook? Did they see it on Instagram? They didn't see it on Twitter, that's for sure. But how did they hear I think the, the, the route that, that, that Jesus or that God has been trying to tell me through this whole thing is, folks, we have got to start using our mouths and telling people about Jesus with what Jesus has done for you. What Jesus has done for me. Jesus has given me peace. Jesus has given me purpose. Jesus has given me comfort when I needed it. He's given me strength. Had somebody one day say, so what's God doing in your life? And I said, how much time do you have? If I really get into it, how much time? But anyway, they brought this man. And they begged Jesus to lay his hands on him. Just to touch him. Apparently they knew that that worked. Couldn't they have walked up and said, Jesus, speak it. Now, we're going to go back real quick. First of all, you have the they. We don't know how many of the they they were. We don't know how many there were. It could have been two. It could have been five. It could have been ten. But they brought this, this friend to Jesus. Do you think they just looked and found a random, a random person that was having problems and said, Oh, you look like you're having problems. We're going to take you to Jesus. You think about that. It's kind of like, mm, Maybe. Most likely, most theologians believe it was somebody they knew. 
Because if it's somebody you know, do you start to care about them? I was talking to a friend in, in, back in, in, in Murphy. Uh, she's a doctor. And I asked her one day, I said, how do you deal with going to church with your patients? And she says, well, it's interesting. Because some days I tend to care more for those folks than I do others because I know them better through church. When I was a volunteer firefighter, one of the hardest things to do is to pull up on a wreck and praying that it wasn't somebody you knew because then you go, I mean, not that you would not do your best, but when you're, it's somebody you know, man, you, you pull out all the stops. Grandparents, think about this. If your grandkid needs you, what holds you back? Anything? Think about our friends. Think about our family members. Think about just acquaintances, folks that we work with, that we, we care about them, and they don't know Jesus. Are we going to put forth the same effort for them? Think about your grandkids or your kids that may not know Jesus. Are we going to put forth the same effort for them? To go to them and say, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. Because Jesus can make a difference in your life. If these friends took their, their, their uh, deaf and mute friend to Jesus because they wanted him healed. Wow. And you realize that the deaf mute guy could have, could have said, no. I don't want to go. He could have refused. Now you realize the guy that we talked about that was paralyzed, he couldn't have gotten up and left. He could have said, no, 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 that they still drug him in. Chances are he didn't. But this guy, this guy had a choice. And he still went. But I love this part. Verse 33 says, so he took him away from the crowd in private. If you look through scripture, this is one of the only times that Jesus takes the person that he's healing away from the major part of the crowd. Other times he does it right then, right there. This time he takes him aside. I don't know why. Theologians have all these different thoughts and I'm kind of like, okay, you guys are all over the place with this one. I'm just going to look at it and say, Jesus took him aside. He took him aside. And then, after putting his fingers in the man's ear, spitting, he touched his tongue. Okay? Let's get the grossness beside this. Okay? We've already heard that Jesus spit on the ground, made mud, and put it in this guy's eyes. Now, apparently, he spit in his hand and then touched the guy's tongue. That's a little weird. Maybe that's why Jesus took him aside. I don't know. But Jesus touched his ears, touched his tongue. Then, what does it say happened here? He looked up to heaven and sighed deeply. And in English, he said, be opened. Did you realize that he didn't say for his tongue to be loosed? He said, be open. And here's what I think it is. Not only were his ears opened, his mouth was opened as well. Be open. Now, when you do that, you realize that two things happen. One, you hear. The other one, you speak. God not only healed him, God gave him the ability to hear and the ability to speak. And I think sometimes if I look at this from the believer's standpoint, I think that there are times that we need to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, will you touch me because I need to have my ears opened and I need to have my mouth opened. Or maybe it's the other way around, ears open, your mouth shut. I don't know. But maybe there's times that we need to go to Jesus and say, because I need to hear from you and you're the one that can do it. But at the same time, I need to speak for you. I need to talk about what you have done in my life. Not that I'm speaking for Jesus, but that I'm speaking the name of Jesus, of what he's done. And sometimes I need my ears open so that I hear him, but at the same time that I'm speaking out. 
And I love the fact that Jesus didn't just touch one side of him. He touched his ears. Notice it's plurals. Plural there. Touched his ears. Pulled them out. And you realize that we have two ears and one mouth, right? You know why that is? We should listen twice as much as we, we talk. So if God has got something for us, we should listen. But I'm also going to tell you this. I rarely, rarely find that God does something in my life or speaks into my life that it's just for me. So many times that God has spoken into my life and has done things, opened my ears so that I could hear him. It wasn't just for me. He may have done it in my life, but to be able to use me to impact somebody. He chose me to use. Sometimes I'll look at God and go, uh, I'm going to have to trust your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding because you know what? I wouldn't have picked me. I know me too well and I wouldn't have picked me to do that. But I think there are times that if we will listen and, and open our ears and let God open our mouth, that we can say what we need to say. Even when you look and say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I'm not good at speaking to people. Really? What about God speaking through you to people? And I don't know anybody, I don't know a single believer that could look and say, I'm not good at letting, or I, God's not good at speaking through me to other people. I may not be good at speaking, but God is amazing at using people to speak through them to impact the lives of others. But I want you to look here. Keep going. Immediately, his ears were opened and his tongue was loose and he began to speak clearly. Clearly. Do you have a problem speaking clearly? Talk to Jesus. Do you have a problem with not being able to hear him? Speak to Jesus. He can do that. Because you realize, as the song in Louisa just saying, the same God that I talked about that spoke the world into existence is the same God that opened a man's ears and loosened his tongue to where he could speak clearly. If he did it for him, guess what? He can do it for you. But let's continue on. Again, now notice how many times Jesus has done this, that he looks and says he ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more they proclaimed it. I thought about doing this this morning is to look at everybody and saying, okay, don't anybody talk about Jesus. Don't talk about Jesus, hoping that it would have the reverse effect that everybody would go out and talk about Jesus. But you know what? I don't have the same power in words that Jesus does. But folks, why are we not talking about him? Why are we not saying, hey, let me tell you what Jesus did in my life. Let me tell you how Jesus healed me. Let me tell you how this. Let me tell you. Folks, I could, go, I could go off on a tangent here and talk about the things that Jesus has done. <clears throat> things that I look at and go, ooh, that was not a good thing. Why did that have to happen? When I was playing kickball with my students on July the 10th of 2019, and I took a step, and I heard this loud snap. And I went to the ground. I thought, I broke my ankle. No, much worse. I snapped the Achilles tendon on my right foot. Some of y'all remember me when I showed up in a boot and a cast and all that fun stuff. God used that. God took what, I, what had happened to me. He didn't cause it. He allowed it to happen. But he took that and through that he was able to do some amazing things. He took care of me because right after I did it, two weeks to the day, well, actually it was two, uh, two and a half weeks to the day of when I'd snapped that, I was on a mission trip in southeast Texas. We were building houses, and I'm on a scooter with my foot in a cast. What did God do? He took me and he taught me some things. He taught me humility. He taught me true servanthood. He taught me how to truly, truly, and this is something I've had problems with all my life, to truly delegate and to give some things up. 
Because I was the guy that would be on the scaffolding. I sat there on that little scooter and watched some of my students on the roof of this house as they were decking the house and as they were getting things ready. And I'm going, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Why can't I do this? And I'm having to give directions and give support from the ground. And I'm going, God, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. You know what God did? He took me and put me in a position where I needed to be so that I would learn some things. Because I'm a little pig-headed sometimes. And he says, "Mm -mm, here we go. But I can tell you more things about what God has done. Through the death of my dad, how it pulled my family back together. And I'm like, I didn't like that. But you know what? I look at what God did and it was amazing. So many things that God has done. Are we going to talk about it? Are we going to just sit back? I'm not going to use the stool this week. But do we just sit back and look and go, "Mm, I'm not going to say anything. This is just for me. I loved it this weekend. I got to see some pictures from somebody's great grandbaby that were just adorable. And I loved it. And they shared it as like, I'm so excited about what God has done. Look at this. Look at this. And I'm just kind of like going, ooh. Part of me said, I'd love it. Make sure my daughter's not listening to this. I'd love another grandbaby, but, you know, I'm like, I'm, I can live through somebody else's grandbabies. I can do that. But somebody was so excited about their great-grandchild that they posted it. They talked about it. I mean, it was Chester and Sandy, by the way. And Chester's been talking about it all, I mean, last week and the week before. Ooh, we're going to go see the great-grandbaby. Ooh, we're going to go see the... I'm like... Dude, yeah, you're excited. He was excited about going to see this great, great grandbaby. He talked about it, about the trip. And I'm like, can we do that with Jesus? Can we do that with Jesus? Rhetorical question here. But if you've had an experience or an encounter with Jesus Christ, did it make a difference in your life? If so, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Now, right here, it says, the more he ordered them, the more they went out, the order to keep quiet, the more they went out and proclaimed it. Why? Because they were so excited about what God had done. How can you keep it to yourself? Or do we just get to the point where it's like, hmm, okay. I used this term one day. Um, so many years ago said, we as, as modern day Christians have a can problem. We come to church when we can, we sit on our can, get all we can, and then can all we get. <laughs> so then what do you do with it? It's in a can. Well, okay, open it. Open it. Folks, I want to be at the point, and I've used this before too, I want to be at a point to where Jesus has done so much for me that I am so full of Jesus that when people bump into me, Jesus sloshes out. They can't help but see Jesus. They can't help but see what Jesus has done in my life. Then when people look at you and you're wearing, I would you do it with my, my, my teenagers, when, when people see you wearing a Christian t-shirt, And it's got a verse on it. Do you know the verse? Can you tell them about it? Can you tell them how that has impacted your life? What's the difference? What's the difference? How has Jesus made a difference in your life? Folks, I've got more peace now than I've ever had. And I came to Christ years ago. The longer I know him, the more peace I get. The more joy I get because I discover more and more about who he is and how much he loves me. And I should have that. But here's here's the thing that that one of the, I want you to notice this. Verse 37. They were extremely astonished and said he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. But that phrase right there, extremely astonished. You know, they were talking about in other other times when Jesus has done miracles, they were amazed. Do you realize this is one of the only times that the way it translates is they were astonished. And not just astonished, they were extremely astonished. And they were just like going, wow, almost in awe. Have you ever had one of those situations to where something happened and you were just in awe and you just stood back and went, wow. And it's like, amazing. You were beside yourself. You couldn't speak. You didn't know what to say. Have you ever had one of those experiences? 
to where you look and you go, oh, really? I've had things happen before that I look back on and go, whoa, that, had, that, had to, <laughs> that was God. I may not have seen it at the time, but I looked at it later and went, well, that was God. If that weren't God, I don't know what it was. When I was a volunteer firefighter, there, were, there was one fire. My last fire I worked in Arkansas. On the way there, I had a feeling, I'm not coming home from this fire. But I couldn't stop the truck. I said, God, if you don't want me going to this fire, you better stop this truck. He didn't stop the truck and I went. There were three different things that happened at that fire that could have caused, I mean, I'm trying to think the word, that uh, disastrous situation. And I look back at it now and I go, well, that, was, that was God. I look and go, wow. How did we ever, how did we, there is no, the looking at this, there is no physical way to explain what took place other than God. And I'm going, wow, that's not even an inkling of what these folks were. But they were extremely astonished. Look at what Jesus did. What? Really? The paralyzed man, they didn't say he was extremely astonished. Or extremely astonished. People were saying that they were amazed. They were amazed, but it astonished. And it goes in and it says, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf and the mute to hear and to speak. Is there anything, not a rhetorical question, so feel free to answer. Is there anything that Jesus can't do? Other than sin, is there anything that Jesus can't do? No. Is there anything that Jesus can't heal? Outside of rejection of Jesus Christ, is there anything that Jesus can't forgive? And by the way, if you come to him, he'll forgive you for that too, if you come to him. Is there anything that Jesus can't forgive? Can we look and say from our own perspective that we can be extremely astonished for who Jesus is and what Jesus can do? We're watching physical things that Jesus is taking care of. Now, think about this. This is setting up for next week. Because next week, as we, as we finish this out, it's going to be, I once was dead. But Jesus... Do you realize that the other things that we have talked about were physical things that these folks probably could have continued to live with this? Think about this. The man that was formerly blind, he'd made it to that point. This person was deaf and mute. They'd made it to this point. The guy that was paralyzed, apparently he had friends that were taking care of him. The guy that was possessed. He was still living, wasn't he? You look at these and go, wow. So, Jesus can do pretty much anything. I've been asking you this through the whole series. What is your once was? Have you figured out what your once was is? If you were to stop and look at somebody and you were to fill in that blank, I once was, what would be in your blank that Jesus took care of? I think for believers, the first thing we can do is, I once was a sinner destined for hell, but Jesus. I once was angry, but Jesus. I once was bitter, but Jesus. I once was self-righteous, but Jesus. Folks, you see that with this, we can fill in anything in that blank. What can we fill in that blank with that Jesus can't take care of? Is there anything that we can put in that blank that Jesus can't take care of? I once was lonely, but Jesus. 
I once was afraid, but Jesus. I once was fearful. I once was filled with hate. I once was. Folks, you realize that that, that, that can go for a long time. I once was. I can tell you this over the last week, week and a few days, been a lot of things that I once was with my mother-in-law being in the hospital. I was fearful, but Jesus took it. Whatever happens, you know, the thing is, I've got to realize this. My mother-in-law knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Regardless of what happens, she's going to be okay. God's choosing to heal her. I'm great with that. He's choosing to do it through medical science, like Kevin was saying. He's choosing to heal her. And I look and I go, yeah. I look at Trish, and and, and Trish, Trish has gotten so many over this last week of I once was but Jesus. I look at what Jesus has done over the last week in her life. But I stop and I look and I go, Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what Jesus has done. Let's talk about how Jesus took care of some things in my life that I didn't have to face. Other folks may have had to face those things. I didn't, but that's because he took me through this this journey to get me to where I needed to be. I look at other folks and go, they were once this, but now Jesus... And it's not because of who we were, who we are, it's because of who he is. That any of this can take place. And I would say this, you might be at a point this morning that you're, you're, you're at that very first spot of saying, I'm a sinner, I know that I'm destined for hell because I need forgiveness for what I have done. It is a choice that I have made, but I need Jesus. And if that's what you need to do today, I'm going to tell you this, I'll be down here front when we sing in just a minute. I'll be down here. If you need to talk about it, come talk to me. If you're at a point of saying, you know what? Um, I need to be baptized because that's what Jesus says we should do to show people as our outward appearance that uh, I'm dead to my old self and I'm living a, a new life with him. Folks, we'll fill the baptistry. We'll, we'll baptize you. Let's do that. If that's something that you need to do, maybe you just need to get to the point of saying, you know what? I've had this thing stuck in my back pocket for so long. I've had this hatred, this bitterness, this uh, discontent. Um, I need my joy restored. I guess what, folks? I once was, but Jesus, and Jesus can take care of that. And if you need to do it down here at this altar, you need to do it there in the seat where you're sitting. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook and you need to do it right where you're at, do it. Do it to stop and say, I need to get this taken care of because I need to see what Jesus is going to do. I want Jesus to change me. I once was, but. And then I want to be able to share that and not just share all of it, but I want to be able to to share what he's doing and I want to be able to celebrate it. You realize that these folks were celebrating. That part of their celebration was going around and telling people, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. When you get something new, do you show it off? Why? You're proud of it. When God does something in your life, hey folks, let's show it off. Let's show it off because of what he did. That others can look and go, if God can do that in their life, what can he do in my life? I look at friends over the years and go, well, if God can do that in their life, what can he do in my life? That'd be just amazing. Not doing the comparison thing, but if he can do that for them. I'm thinking these folks, how did they know? Because they had other people that are going, oh, if God can heal the paralyzed man, I bet he can heal my my, my blind friend. And I need to look and go, you know what? If he can heal my brokenness and my, my, my sin and take care of that, what can he do for my friend that has brokenness and sin? I need to take them to Jesus. Because folks realize we're plan A. There's no plan B. It's our job to let the world know. So as we get close to next week and we end up this series, if you haven't figured out your I once was, please do. What were you once that Jesus has made a difference? And I'm going to give you homework. 
When you do that, tell somebody. Tell somebody. The best and easiest way to do it is to start with other believers. Look at other believers and say, can I tell you what Jesus has done? Because once you start to share it with a safe crowd, sharing it with others is so much simpler. Share it with a safe crowd and say, here's what God is teaching me. Here's what he has shown me. Here's what he's doing in my life. Then you can start to share it with others. But what decision do you need to make? You've got to make a choice. I'm praying that we don't leave this building the same as we showed up. That we didn't come in and we just got our checkbox and go, yep, attended church today. That's out the way. But you can say, I came, I worshiped, God spoke, and I made a choice of what to do with what he's told me. Chances are, if we're going to listen and listen well, God is speaking. He's speaking. What does he want you to do? Pray with me. Fathers, we come to this point right now with this time of commitment. God, I pray that you would just do what you do. And God, that we would just be astonished. We would be just amazed. Father, that you would do those things. And God, we thank you. I thank you that you're still doing them. And that you're still alive and, and, and functioning and doing everything. God, you are just as vital today as you were. And Father, that your word is just as alive. Father, whatever decision needs to be made today in hearts and lives, I pray that that would happen. And that God, you get the glory for it. Not us, not this church, not the people, but that you get the glory for what takes place, Father. And God, as we turn our eyes to you, because you are the only one that can take care of these things. Father, we love you and we worship you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's worship together.